Hello everyone, this is RaySpace, back with more Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. This is the Cassade rocket, a rocket of my own design that runs on hydrogen and oxygen. And so the model is my own model from Blender. However, there are additions to that model that are different. Uh, these are landing legs from Pekka's Falcon 9. So they're like that. They're covering up the logo, which is a bit sad, but there they are. We've got those landing legs and up above here we have some grid fins so you know what's going on here we are trying to recover this like the falcon 9 rocket from spacex which also uses landing legs and grid fins landing legs do not appear on spacex's starship that gets caught by chopsticks in theory if we got to that or super heavy which has gotten caught with chopsticks so anyway this is the kasei rocket it has a capacity of in this configuration about 85 tons to low earth orbit and we are going to verify that we have to actually make sure that it can be recovered safely i have previously recovered the kasei first stage safely but not like this i put wings on it and had a closing front end so that it would have a nose and then i landed it on a runway which is actually harder <laughs> but um, I've done that, but I'm much more used to doing things an airplane way. I'm an airplane enthusiast, first and foremost of all, uh, so I tend to like to recover things as airplanes on runways. But it turns out that this, this Kasei rocket is meant to be a derivative of Japanese rockets, and so uh, eventually it was intended that in the future the Japanese space program would be making something like this, and the Japanese seem to be working on a SpaceX light recovery, which makes sense because they don't really have a place to land downrange on a runway anyway. My setup between Mexico and the Bahamas is sort of particular, and the Japanese do not have that kind of stretch where they can land downrange the way I do in Kerbal Space Program. So, of course, they're going to be doing it the SpaceX way which is landing on a drone ship of some kind. And I've made the drone ship, but I don't know where to put it just yet. And actually placing it has been a little bit fraught, but that's a whole other topic. So we're going to try to land this drone ship style because Honda, you know, the Japanese company, has been making a grasshopper. So they're doing it the SpaceX way, and I figure that's what they're going to be doing. So, so let's see about this. I'm going, I've already tested it out a little bit during the live stream, and this is not including those tests. I've made some changes, and we're going to see how those changes work out. The big change is that the thrust range of the ED9s has changed. It used to be that these went down to 25%, which uh, Pekka himself uh, deemed unrealistic. Pekka is also trying to work on a landing script for this, and so I've adjusted it to 40%. So they have less throttling range, making it more difficult for it to land. So I've just made it more difficult on myself, as if I needed that. And uh, But Pekka is also working on a landing script to get safely onto a drone ship. And we'll see that later on. But uh, for now, I'm just going to use the script that I've cooked up. So let's take it outside to Tampico. Uh, not to Tanagashima, but in this case, we're going to be launching out of Tampico. This is a long story. Uh, we'll get to that later on, why a Japanese rocket would be launching out of Tampico. That's related to my future history timeline, the TIPA timeline. But yes, that this is how it works. So technically, they could use the Tampico launch pad and land downrange like that. It's just that, well, they're not developing the technology for it, so might as well just go like this, which they are developing the technology for. It seems more likely to happen this way. So here we are at sunny Tampico. This is just the core alone Kasei rocket. It was designed so that it could launch like this without boosters, unlike SLS. It can take boosters, but it doesn't need the boosters. And it still gets the 85 tons to lower forward without the boosters, and with hopefully recovery. So we're putting in the launch script into the upper stage. It will continue on in theory, but we're not gonna follow it. There is no drone ship right now. We're just looking for it to slow down and sort of get to a safe splashdown 
in the Gulf of Mexico. So the landing script is an adapted Falcon 9 landing script and of course there are a lot of differences. We're not doing a return to launch site in this case, the original script was doing that so it was actually turning around and doing the boost back. Um, this does do a breaking burn as uh, my old script did as well. But yeah, it's, it's quite different and so numbers need tweaking and we'll see how it's gonna go. I've again already done some testing during a live stream and there were explosions, but hopefully we're not going to have as much trouble here. But then again, I've just changed fundamentally how the engines work, so that could be a problem. Also, very much unlike the Merlin engines, these engines have a long spool-up time, as I expect the Hydrolox engines would. So they don't ignite as quickly as Merlins or Raptors. Maybe we can hypothesize that they would, but for now they're not configured like that and so the script has to deal with that extra time. Okay, switching to this, activating the script. There are other ways of doing this. But this is how I'm doing it for now. That plume is still a little bit weird. Anyway. So there is a location where I was trying to put a drone ship, and that's what the target distance is measuring from. The RCS thrusters are actually only 3 kilonewtons here, but they are using the Hydrolox. And these were the Falcon 9 grid fins and Lang legs, but I added tweak scale, so that's another variable whether tweak scale is doing things properly or not. Well. The second, uh, second stage has gone beyond our physics range, so that's why that error occurred. Now, one troubling thing is it seems to deviate a lot from where it's supposed to be aiming, which is based on where the target is. Basically, the target is at 76 degrees, so of course we are aiming 180 off of that, but technically if we're off to the side, we would also want to correct for that too. And the old Falcon 9 script did that, but right now I haven't written in anything about correcting. But it still seems to deviate to one side for reasons I don't understand. It'll fix that after the braking burn, but it's still weird. So here we start the braking burn. And I kept this in because it would help us aim for the target as well. We were 11 kilometers away from the target when we started this, but we're going to end up going too far. We end up now 22 kilometers beyond the target location. And that's increasing. The braking burn is actually more for aerodynamic forces than for the heat. It's actually to prevent FAR from ripping this apart, which it did during the live streams. Or live stream, actually, we only tested this in one. We seem to have more delta V than we strictly need here. We'll see how it does. Okay, well, <clears throat> suicide burn countdown seems good, but we're very sideways now. Is it, okay, we're too sideways like that. What's it? What's with it not going towards the retrograde marker? And then we got an infinity. That's because uh, the engines are gone. If the engines are gone, you can't calculate the thrust weight ratio. Hmm. So, all right, it was looking okay, but this is very troublesome. We seem to have enough fuel. 
Well, I'm going to try to increase how quickly it's going to follow retrograde. And we'll try one more time, at least for this video. Oh, you know what? Let me also get calculating things properly. Oh, maybe that was the main problem. Let me not... I think I missed a line here. That might help. It wasn't updating a calculation that it needed to do. Well, okay, so not increasing sensitivity, but getting it to do an additional calculation that might help. Let's see. The diameter of this rocket is 8.4 meters. It's the same as SLS. It's meant to increase lower orbit capacity, somewhat at the expense of the higher orbit capacities. Actually, I thought that I had extended it a, long, a little bit longer than that already. I'll have to check that out. Okay, go, go, go. Okay, ignition for the breaking burn. Okay. Okay, retrograde. Good on that part. Following retrograde a lot better this time. It's still a bit hard. I think it's based on where it's measuring on the rocket. I think it's measuring the height a little bit too high up. I need it to measure the height from down here. And I think it'd be alright. I mean, we're not using the full throttle. So... It just needs to throttle up a little bit more or start earlier and it'll work out. So I'll tweak that, but this is where we're at. We're just losing the engines uh, and hitting a little bit hard, but I'll tweak it some more and I'll figure it out. So my current work is trying to make sure that the Kasei rocket can land on a drone ship and this is how it's been going. So with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.